Hi everyone, I'm Tina. This is To The Inner Wild. Welcome to my channel. So today we're in a different spot of the parking lot. And you know, we're just gonna cut this part out. Okay. Spirit asks us not to be overly critical to our behaviors, but to resource them to observe and drive important insights to the patterning of our human condition relative to the direction of our free will. So which one drives the other? Part of the, the little non-verbal insight I left in for the sake of self-scrutiny. I felt it necessary to keep mm -hmm. as my addictions, even as they pose low threat, still carry the same threat. Its source roots from the lack of boundaries. This borders between discernment of ethics and balance. Now ethically, I know it is unhealthy, but I wager my future betting in time I will exercise to exercise, exercise these little daily demons of mine. I think we all do this when it comes to shadow work. One habit may be alleviated while another muted form infiltrates your world, as if it had absolutely nothing to do with the other, when in fact all relationships bleed into one another as a common storyline of approach. How do we walk in on the scene when we take either lead or supporting roles? I find this intriguing as my cookie fetish eventually borders from preference to habit to attachment. So what bonds do you create in your life that have this dark horse energy. While I root for the heart of the dark horse, is the dark horse's heart in the right place? All right, I'm ready to talk. Um, so, let's say hello to my little friend. Hello, Amethyst, how are you? How are you doing? Thanks for protecting the decks. It's pretty. At first, I was a little on edge and how could I be on edge with crystals like that's crazy crystals are just I can be very selective okay when it comes to crystals but finding the beauty in in any of them I will always find it I think it's not hard to but with this particular one I was on edge because there's like this white stuff on the on the rim of it and to me, it's like morning eye, like a crystal's morning eye, like gunk, right? That's what it looked like to me. But then when I look closer and closer, there's a frostiness to it. Can you, I don't even know if you can see it. It's frosty and it's Jimmy. Shrink yourself into this world. It expands the view here, zooms it out or zoom in anyway. With ones that I'm picky with, where it just doesn't quite shout out its luster, its whatever thing that makes it so unique and and wonderful to get entranced in and and meditate with, and which I haven't done in a great while because I was assuming that with all the changes that were going to happen in my life, all the news, spiritual news flashes, that it was going to be immediate and whatever I was doing at the moment, I had to reprioritize and just think more like short run, like the, the future was going to happen more presently, if that makes sense. That it was just going to be like right around the other side, right around the block. And the truth of it is, I just learned in the course of these months this year that manifestations can get jumbled up that way. And that was just from pure experience, but then reiterated through other spiritualists. Like, oh, darn it. Well, there it goes, you know, at least I got that skit of my life done and over with right and sometimes it happens in cycles and sporadic rotations and you know that's part of the learning process i'm not meant to judge my learning curve whether that's broad or sharp curvature so whatever the case back to here i don't like dissing any crystals okay my least favorite are the man-made ones I know it's really popular, like the aqua aura and the angel aura crystals. And, you know, they do catch my eye. I do own some of them. Or rather, they own me. We work together, okay? <laughs> so, anyway. What was I going to say to that? Crystals, yes. 
I choose them to protect my decks. They're almost like in Indiana Jones, the Holy Grail, the, the cup, the chalice, that rings true is the one that isn't like the prettiest. Mm. The prettiest isn't the word for it. But the one that catches the most attention, okay, the one that looks holy, uh, that holds prestige, is not truly the cup that sacred that holds meaning greatest meaning that is the key the door to unlock the way out to to obstruct all harm and let it all fall away the legitimate one turns out to be the unassuming one the one that is neither publicly recognized nor considered it's the dark horse energy that serves as a link of saving grace to our divine roots one that holds substance in history not his or her story that dictates its divinity within structurally sound preferences. There's a difference between one who lives it and one who writes it. The divide is presented in the choice to represent it in authentic form. So when we look at another being, such as one who has evidently endured some hard times, whether a crystal or ourselves, how do we honor our history as unfolding value to our present? So that's where these crystals come in. Yes, I thought I'd share that with you. It's just kind of in the moment. And sometimes I'm tired of like talking tarot. No, I'm not. I wait all day for this and then I'll try to do some work or dig myself out of a hole. And then all of a sudden, like I'm here. I'm, I'm all dug out by the time I get here. But anyway, um, I love it. I, I don't know if you can see. Wait, where's the, where's the sun? Where's the sun? Do you see the glimmer? <laughs> And like the hues, the different hues. One thing I have to let you know though, if you don't already know, they will fade in the sun. So I would kindly tell you not to put it sitting in direct sunlight because it will fade. Uh, hues. So where, where are you? Okay, where's the sun? We just lost it. Sorry. I wanted to pull the camera closer so I could show you, but I'm not quite done up. Look, I have my prison... Um, outfit on. Do you like it? It's like I'm in um, juvie, right? I, I have no idea. I'm just, it's out of my imagination. But I was going through some, okay, before I get on to the next topic of blabber mouthing, here we go. We're, okay. Mm, can, I don't know if you can see it. Mm, am I hiding the light? Where are you? Do you see it yet? Do you see it? I don't know. I keep losing the sun. I, I don't think I could ever be a surgeon. You know? I don't think I could do that because of the tools that you use. I don't know if you're capturing all of that. But anyway, so don't let it fade, because that's part of the beauty. In fact, if you wipe out all the purple, it's basically just a clear quartz, really. Well, not really, but its properties brought forward by visual triggers, which are the integration of color therapy, symbolism, and more potent chakra responses that magnify its communication energetically and subconsciously to us in comprehensive form. It's the same root. It's the same family. It's, that's its base clear quartz yes which is still a master healer but why are you going to take away the properties of it being an amethyst or more accurately why would you willingly inhibit its potential or take away from its natural qualities this which is not just being on top of a master healer but also a protector a stone of sobriety yes for striving to be mindful and gain answers i like having amethyst to not just protect and cleanse yeah, it's pretty standard it's it's so available and they, they seem to um, pair well with the color coding of these two decks that i chose that i will show you soon 11 11 and what was i going to say to this so if you're seeking to gain answers thank you jophia thank you gabriel thank you my angels yes if you're seeking to gain answers and you want to be in a more focused, mindful state within the plot of time that we have available from day to day, but when we gather those pieces of data, we want to be in a, not controlled, because controlling is a flex that doesn't allow for fluidity. Flexing does cause rigidity and barriers that, that 
leaves that kind of impression, that tone. So what we want is clarity, right? Sobriety, clarity of the mind. Mm -hmm. Clearing of any obstructions within the heart space. Now, recall the color blend of magenta, symbolic of the higher heart chakra, which alchemizes pink and purple, harmonizing the union of emotional body and intuitive divine intelligence. So the color purple in itself plays an integral role in the ascension of the heart. I, I think it just goes hand in hand. But those are the dominant reasons in rationalizing the usage, as it's one of your basic, one of the first crystals that you should have. And so it was more so for practicality. By the way, if you know of or experience astral body stuff, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I've got to learn. I'm called to learn and I, I don't know how to do it. I'm too impatient. <laughs> and then one friend told me that you, you could study it all your life and then, you know, try, 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 but then sometimes it just, it just happens. You just, it, it's not something that you can just will. It's, it's something that when you're ready, it'll just happen. And I'm like, what? Fine, then I don't need to push studying, right? Well, that's, that's kind of true. The things that you learn, it's not to mean that you don't take the initiative, but don't stress yourself out in not knowing too much and in, in the access to learning. I saw 1441. It will come to you when, when it's needed, when it's like the Schwartz is in you. I'm not gonna be mom and have over explained the joke. Dad does that too. Why is it that you guys like daddy jokes? What is it? What is the passion that drives you from within to persist with daddy jokes? I think the whole point is not to take life so seriously, yes? I think so. Anyway, I feel like this crystal is helping me greatly in this sitting alone. I was feeling like, you know, I was going through all my clothes and trying to like simplify so that I could get some ish out of my armoire, you know, some regular like jogging shirts because I don't even go jogging or like one day I'm going to paint or one day I'm going to clean the vents out, you know, get supremely dirty where I don't care about my whatever. I like I have clothing specifically for this, a clothing line specifically for that. That's crazy. Now, it is insane what lengths we may go through to exhibit a sense of control, what's acceptable under what circumstance, and to come out shining. Such behaviors exhibit a muted form of self-sabotage, micromanaging every choice when the energy could be used for more impactful choices. I think maybe it was a way for me to feel like I'm ready for whatever the world had up next. Taking a step back, I see that it's a dynamic that becomes a hidden norm expressed by the majority. When we try so hard to get ahead of the game, we reserve space for expectations. It's the same for getting to know other people. If we struggle to attain information before interaction, then we are less likely to give room to learning through direct interfacing. It, it becomes a hindrance to both the magic and the miracles. Chemistry is reduced to the study of science instead of trust in its organic unfolding. You cannot possibly grasp a human's essence based on their history unless you are also invested in their potential and real-time gestures. We are constantly evolving. Even within our own weaknesses, we express transitionary growth. The state of limbo or complacency isn't endearing, but it is endowing in gathering experience. So when dress rehearsal prefixes showtime, remember to go focus on the freedom of expression rather than fixating on the fashion of context from our prior performances. That's crazy, that's what I accumulated over the course of so many years. I hardly let go of stuff. It's, it's, it's very difficult for me. And so I have to practice and practice. I have lots of tools to practice with now. And that was all generated for years of lack mindset. And, and it's so crazy the way society works in support of that, in earning a dollar or whatever, however many, to continue the cycle of 
the feeling of lack to take so much wealth and then just pour it out into these frivolities that the the security blankets i mean like how many security blankets could you possibly need right like, i was talking to a neighbor about this a few years ago and she was like yeah we just did that with our towel cabinet <laughs> And I could see with the eye contact with the with the husband and wife that there was still some conflict that was just kind of resurfaced. But they stayed quiet. They knew the etiquette of being with others in public. So anyway, I wasn't feeling rotten. I wasn't feeling angry. I was just kind of feeling like yesterday I was feeling blah, right? And then today I feel Aesthetically speaking, no one is going to sit in admiration for a cocoon, just as most would not give accolades in the process of becoming, as the metamorphosis is congruent to the visual of a suspended condom. However, the essence of becoming is exactly where the magic happens, given the vulnerability of absolute hermit and hangman status. So much can harm the overlooked processes as they do for their own transitions. I remember in the past couple of years, tending to my garden, feeling sadness for the cocoons that never came to fruition. I've even mistaken them for spider eggs in limbo with the reactivity of disgust. Is this what we do in the macrocosm to these little creatures? How does the divine and other worlds see us then? More influential to the cosmic growth process, how do we see ourselves in this state? Sheer neglect for its magic, dissecting its mystery as though we have already learned all there is to know from a subject that is tiny enough to fit in our smallest pockets. This gives segue to what we carry in our own baggage. When in transit, what flows beyond our pockets of two cents? I wanted to put my books away. I wanted to get my resources in order, yes? And so I was feeling really happy about that because I de shelved one, one shelf, okay? I, I got that far. It didn't take very long. It took long enough, but it didn't take that long. <laughs> and the point is, is that it's done and I was able to shelf a box of books. And I, I love it because I, now it doesn't feel like I'm in constant moving. Oh, and that's, let's go full circle with this. Now it's 18 minutes in, is uh, I- I get severely depressed and it's not completely from my own energies. While the remedy it lays beyond the realm of pill popping, I realized it lays within action, not consumption. So I go organic with God and they teach me how to do this more effectively in my individual needs without judgment. I'm able to make small steps to get myself out of this vortex-like abyss. So although my efforts seem small to the naked eye of a layman, it's really an achievement that can be seen by those who have grown or survived such battles. Simply the state of fighting failure with absolute acceptance for its place in progress. That when we evolve as cyanobacteria, we mirror its divine placement within its simplicity of resilience. So don't be too hard on yourself or those that depend on you. Children and elders alike need the support of encouragement as they decipher what life is trying to speak into their existence of what abundance lays forth, that it does exist and it is attainable so long as we measure our efforts by its own standing, not base them on the merits expected from our biases built by societal constructs. For those growing and growing older, we should be cognizant of our energies and the power of its harmonization. Full circle with it in that I was just trying to tidy up and, well, gosh, I already forgot. I got a little tied up there. For those that have anxiety, it's okay. Spirit told me to leave this part in to show that it's only right to accept yourself as you are in your moment. You are an expression of divine timing and divine choice. So don't worry about what your truth looks like on the outside. The ones that understand what normally goes unspoken are meant to benefit from it. In this case, if I were to ride with a wave of defeat, let's say, in losing my train of thought, then I would, by manifestation default, derail it. So, to keep focused within your truth that it's not just some random answer or regurgitation of what you were taught, but also an enhancement to involve yourself in your moment, 
as such truths are born from darkness, even within the degree of a dimly lit path. So we are meant to walk it, even if it's still unpaved, to speak it even as we lose our sense of direction, because Lord knows we all encounter that reality at some point or another. Besides, how can you possibly get any help without the traction of your voice? Oh, in moving, that, you know, with the progression in all of this, thank you, Jokyo, thank you, Gabriel, thank you, angels. In moving, I, I thought that, like, the outcome was going to come sooner as projected, but the more you, like, screw with it, it's almost like you're kneading something, baking something, and the dough gets really sticky the more you come in contact with it. It's, it's not... So you think it's the air is going to somehow like make it less tacky, but it's not the more you, and because I use the method, at least with silly putty stick to get like the more you put on it, the more you um, are able to remove off on the little pieces of gummy parts, right? And you can't really do that when you're baking something, when you're kneading dough. It's a different method of alchemy. It uses similar substances, but like baking, if it's not the same element, then it changes the receptivity and thus response of the outcome. In baking something, that it you can't use that method that the more you touch it, the more you come in contact with it, uh, the messier you'll get. Why did I say that? It's the kneading or kneading of the end result that causes one remember. to complicate the process Why? and thus delivery of manifestation. The proven formula that yielded a successful solution from a similar substance does neither need the same response nor abide by the same expectations. Within wielding alone, we experience confusion, delay, and frustration. We become stuck, and our primary tools, otherwise known as our hands, become more tacky and less tactile. I don't remember. Oh, oops. Okay, let's move on. We don't get hung up. Now, here we go. Oh, so yeah, the way I was feeling. Shoot, no. We skipped a part. This is exactly the first degree to becoming a leader. You must act the part even if you don't resonate with it at present circumstance. You must maintain successful footing despite the fluctuating responses received. Now, this is not to say to fake it till you make it, but you must be able to let go, regardless if the impression left is success or failure, because your achievements are as, as illusory as your losses, as they pertain to the applicable moment of growth and expansion. Changes are inevitable. So taking losses as equal to cutting them builds resiliency. The impression you leave on yourself is not only one of a warrior, but one that wins both the battles and war navigating both the ebbs and flows, mastering both microcosm and macrocosm, leading both the inner critic and inner child. So remember to take it easy on yourself when you're learning and striving to love its process. The best facilitator will always be love. So to integrate it, even if all, including your train of thought, becomes lost, the answers will arrive in precise timing. And sometimes like this, elaborated with an expanse of time between reading and analysis. Amid the receptivity and response, interpretation is alchemizing. I don't know, but the way I was feeling, I just was kind of not feeling so particularly wonderful. I was feeling... I don't know. I was a little bit productive today, comparing my, my patterns, and and I just wanted something different for our little sit down today, so I decided to go with the Shadowscapes Tarot, which I have never used before, and then this one is the Daily Guidance from our Angels Oracle Decks, just because I wanted to, you know, why not? Why not? Something about it, like, called me to it. And I gotta use the Doreen Virtue deck. Like, I'm kind of dissing them with how long they've been on my lap and how many of them I have. Like, I'm not putting them to use. And this whole time, I'm thinking, I'm gonna go ahead and do a pick-a-card reading. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. 
Everybody does it. This was a reading from late August of 2020, approximately over four months ago, to reiterate the process of healing and how it, its timing doesn't quite align with the growth or even the growth of our plants. It's a reminder that recovery is more essential and measured independently from development. Stability is the only way to sustainability. It's the first stop to success. If our foundations require reinforcement or repair, then so be it. Effectively, we will be able to handle that much more, and prospectively, we are assured the strength to move forwards. And practically, we can apply that concept to all of our relationships. And, you know, I've been wanting to. I, I immerse myself in them. I might as well just, like, just try it out. It's just a lack of trust and belief and thinking that I'm just never going to get there. And the more I believe that, the more that we believe such thoughts and retain such thoughts, the more we um, breathe life into them. And whether that's an ishy life or a hopeful one rather than one filled with despair and lacking, you know, I got, if I got two choices, the, the road is obvious, right? So I'm going to go ahead with that. Thank you very much. And like I said, yeah, you got the purples in there. And I like how fluid like this is. Like, I didn't want to go with a Deviant Moon Tarot. It was just not my vibe today or where I wanted to go. So I wanted to go with Shadowscapes uh, just for the sake of, like, the artwork. It reminds me of, like, watercolor, how you can flex with the tones and the hues. They express the fragility and flexibility of our color choice and color movement. It allows us to appropriate our attitudes in a way that channels our emotions into speakable terms, where it's interdependent of other feelings and its relationship is defined by its proximity to one another. This particular medium is defined distinctly in a way that does not become layered in context, but rather blended. It's really alchemy within the form of true life, dancing with one another, creating new hues. It conveys a texture through dark and light, rather than topographical mapping of other paints. To me, if you were to compare this to suits within the tarot, it gives me the feeling of both cup energy, um, in flow of emotion and thought, and the sword's energy. When you wield a sword like we talked about yesterday, or the day before, there's a certain fluidity to that, a certain f amount of precision it takes both size of the brain creativity logic right and in the exactness of but being open to you know, going with this flow with the flow wherever it takes you so let's go with that spirit okay let's let's go with that so anyway i wasn't feeling like to it's hard for me to admit this but i felt like kind of amid the eight of swords energy kind of stuck a little bit a little stuck not a lot just a little just a little. Felt a little stuck today. Earlier on. Just, I, I get tired of patterns. I get bored. If I say something like that, I'm automatically triggered like, what are we going to do? And so I started trying to get my stuff in order. I felt like called to do it. After a certain point, I reached a threshold of uh-uh. And then I'm moving it to an uh-huh. That was my aha uh -huh moment. And okay, let's, let's stop doing that. Stop it, Tina. Stop it! Okay, Page of Cups, that came up, that's cool, so what's going on over here? She's under the sea, she's sitting on a shell, why do the fish look so sad? The fish around her look sad, they look distraught, oh she's a bringer of, of love, she brings a vibe to change the environment. Or he, you know. Anyway, I wanted to get a hold of my stuff. Mm, get my resources in order so that I could deliver better and not act within whatever my matrix makes me feel like. Because it's a direct reflection. Like, it's in your face, your freaking mess, your baggage. This is what has been not haunting me. It's more like when something is just kind of constantly jabbing at you anyway i was starting to feel that eight of swords energy come and go within me and i couldn't wear anything like really pretty today i, I was wearing this red velvety t tank top because i'm like yeah root chakra 
<laughs> something I didn't quite it didn't happen quite like that but I felt more compelled to wear the ish out of whatever I have available that's nice because why not because I don't go anywhere nobody goes anywhere for the most part but then after a while I'm like nah. no no that top is okay let's just stop talking about clothes right now we have other things to do here but anyway this is this is what I chose. I was wondering whether or not I was going to keep it. it. Was one of those on edge things like, eh, I don't know, you know. And then I realized I like it because, even, okay, sorry, you see these wrinkles, right? <clears throat> but I like it because it's chill, boyish. I don't have to worry. About it. I like it because it's simple. It makes me feel like. Like an, I can act within the role of a parolee. I can just be lax and be myself and not have to worry about judgment because I've, I've been judged so many times. And it's cool. You know, I can just sit back, lay back, and be myself. I don't have to worry about, like, the snugness of whatever I'm wearing. Trying to show up to how people want to see me and subconsciously agree to their standards. Simultaneously forgoing my principles. It's almost selling out to accommodate preferred visualizations. I mean, why can't I be pretty in an old wrinkled shirt? Why do I need to validate myself to others? And once more, why do I need to feel pretty? Is it because I was born female in what was made to be a man's world? Is it to compensate for resting witch face? Now, before you think this leans towards the feminist movement, they are very real questions that perhaps become more valid once we pose them towards our daughters, mothers, or intuitive aspects of males. Is this what we are subtly taught to enable? A word of advice from spirit. You don't need to prove your worth in someone else's love language when love isn't the primary consideration in contact, and you don't need to contest with those who see otherwise, especially when beauty is defined when strings are attached, or threads for that matter. You know, I can just be chill.